The model that you all have been waiting for is finally here. Thank the lots of delivery and we just got Lord Croak. Let's unbox him right now. Man, the entirety of the cosmos is accessible to each and every individual mind connected to the great mind, the great spirit. Welcome back to the Studio Collectors. Oh boy, you guys are in for a treat and we will be unboxing this awesome crazy looking model from Games Workshop. For Lord Croak, I was really attracted by the very complex composition yet clear communication of the central focus which is Lord Croak himself. The moment I saw this model, I knew I had to paint it and create a tutorial for all you guys. This honestly is a pretty complex model and I would like to share with you guys my sub-assembly so that when you guys decide to paint up your own lock crook yourself, it's going to be as enjoyable as possible. Aside from sub-assemblies, I will also be sharing some assembly tips during this video and you guys don't want to miss that out. Lastly, I will close off the video with some size comparisons and I will be using a skeleton from the Woofen Watch. So enough dawdling around, let's look at what we get in the Lord Croak box right now! So for today, we are going to be unboxing Lord Croak. As you can see, Lord Croak is a pretty huge box, just like most of the monsters, sort of like the size of the Great Unclean One box. So let's cut the plastic and let's see what's inside this amazing looking box. So offhand, just looking at the artwork, looks really interesting, looks really awesome. Can't wait to see what's inside and let's see how they have organized the screws. Okay, so first off we have the instructions and as what we can see, the screws are actually pretty thick. So I would say that this is sort of like one and a half screws of plastic. Usually with monsters, you get two full screws. But because of the thickness of certain parts of the sculpt, such as this, these floaty rocks, therefore, it might seem really, really sparse. But let's have a look. Okay, so in this screw, we get many, many different materials. There's dirt, vines, so as I imagine a the throne is suspended through the vines and stuff like that. And let's see over here. Very, very intricate. Okay, so there's some skulls here. You might not want to miss this. There's a Stormcast helmet here. So that's strange because these guys are order also. Okay, so enough about looking at the screws. The base is included. I think this is an ATMM base. Okay, so now let's just look at the instructions. So, in my mind, I'm not really sure how I can organize this. I would say that I would just want the throne to be in one piece. Probably leave Lock Croak off so that I can paint the stonework without interfering with his skin. This looks like a pretty good sub assembly on its own. For the rocks, I see that this part here might be an issue because with parts that connect in two places, they have to match perfectly and sometimes this doesn't happen. So we just gotta take note here. I would probably recommend this whole thing to be in one piece. Oh, looks really really complicated. So what we can see, you can put Lock Croak with his headpiece or without his headpiece showing his face. This is a really complicated model. I have no idea how to split this up into some assembly. I'll decide that later when I'm assembling. Okay, so this is his war scroll. For those of you who play the game, yep, here it is. Okay. And yeah, different languages. And this is it. So I'm gonna start assembling lock group in just a little bit. So now that we have unboxed lock group. Let's get this model assembled. For this stage, I'll be using these materials right here to assemble Lord Croak. I'll also be doing some gap filling 
and I'll be sharing with you guys exactly where you need to take note to fill in the gaps. So if you are here just for the sub-assemblies, head on to the sub-assembly chapter. Links will be in the description below. Alright, let's get assembling Lock Probe right now. Okay, so as usual, I'm going to follow instructions and I'm going to leave a little bit of plastic from the model and I'm going to just quickly snip the parts off first before cutting it closer. Okay, so you just want to get the parts out. The reason why I do this is because I don't want any of the plastic that's going to be attached to the model to be stressed. And when plastic is stressed, they tend to turn white and sometimes they tend to deform the model. And if these things are on small details such as the poles or the swords or stuff like that, it tends to really make the model look a lot worse. Okay, so I'm just trimming off the excess plastic here. But just look at this, this little cute frog there. I almost thought that it was a bit of sprue that I had to trim off. And somewhere down the line, I did accidentally trim off some stuff because this model is so chock full with little details that I never expect all this to really exist. Okay, so now that I have cut the model out, I'm going to be sending down some of the extra nubs. So currently right here, what I'm using is a 220 grid sanding sponge. I find that the sanding sponge is very good because it conforms to the shapes very well. And right here, I'm just going to use a fine tip applicator of super glue. And I'm just going to be putting just a little bit, just enough so that I can assemble the next part of the model. Okay, uh, I tried to dry assemble it and I realized that these parts tend to get affected. So I'm going to be trimming off the bits. And just with the fine tip applicator again, I'm just placing it at all the contact points. Always dry fit before you put super glue. And always put just a little bit, don't put too much. Just hold it in for a couple of seconds and this is done. Okay, so as for the rock parts, I'm just also going to be slowly sending down the nubs. And going to be using a craft knife to scrape it apart. So how I'm going to be organizing the miniature is, in my mind, I want to make sure that the throne is separate. And I want the surrounding rocks to also be a sub-assembly because this will really help the miniature be painted because I don't want all these things blocking the way of the brush. Okay, so as you can see during the assembly, uh, the parts fit actually really nicely. But the problem then comes because there are multiple connection points and all of them to line up. That can be quite a challenge after that. Okay, so right here, I'm currently using AK Grey Party to fill up the gaps. What I like about AK Grey Party is that I tends to dry very sandable and that's why I'm just putting in a lot of excess. Just put it more than what you need and because all the rest can be sanded off very nicely later. Okay, so just don't be too worried but just be concerned when you are working near detail. You don't want to obscure any of the detail. So when working with the throne, I realized that there was a really huge gap here because the parts just didn't sync together. But it's okay, after just filling in multiple layers of this gap filler, I'm just going to go down with a quick sand and it's going to be A-OK. -okay. Just pay particular attention to all the joints and just put in a little bit of gap filler in all them joints. Okay, that's it for the throne. Now just applying another layer. As I mentioned, you want to do this in multiple thin layers because if you do it in one thick layer, the outside might be dry but the inside will not be dry. So you just want to do it in thin layers, dry, 
just apply again, try again. Just to make sure that you get a good coverage of all the gaps. The rest of the other rocks tend to be pretty flat and easy surfaces. It's just the throne that it's going to be a little bit troublesome because it's so chock full of details. Okay, so now I'm going back with the 220 grit sandpaper and I'm just sanding it down the gaps. What I usually do is I start with the 20 grit sanding sponge first, then I move on to a 400 grit to make sure that the surface is smooth. So you, right here you can see, after sanding, the party just exists in the gap and it really creates a very smooth surface. In my opinion, this is the best party I've used so far because it's very very nicely sandable. The other parties tend to stick together and when I sand the entire piece of party comes out. And I'm very glad that I've swapped to this brand of gap filling party right now. Okay, just continuing to sand. And in just a little bit, I'll be sharing with you guys my sub assemblies. So the sub assemblies are going to be really important because you will want to assemble this miniature so that you can reach all the details on the throne. Because this is such a massive model, I don't recommend painting the entire model in one piece. So I'm going to be recommending some sub-assemblies so that painting can be as painless as possible. So let's look at the sub-assemblies I'll be recommending for Lord Crook right now. So fundamentally how I've organized the sub-assembly is that I've done the left side, I've done the throne and I've done the right hand side. And then I've left off the two piles of snakes and the piles of snakes tend to go on to the throne. Why I left off the pile of snakes is because I want to be painting the rocks as evenly as possible. I don't want to miss any spots there. Okay, so I made a mistake. I glued on the left side of the plant, but you can don't glue that part on. Okay, so this is the sub-assembly, Stan Crook and his assistant on the right hand side. So now that we have seen the sub-assemblies, we are going to look into the size comparison of Lord Crook. This is a massive model and I will be comparing him to a little skeleton. So let's go on straight to the size comparisons right now. So this is Lord Crook, fully assembled compared to a Wolfen Watch skeleton. He really looks damn massive and the base doesn't reflect the size of this model. I'm so excited to paint him up and you can expect to see a video next week. While my breath is just taken away by the complexity and how amazing this model looks, I'm really very excited to get this model painted and I will be producing a comprehensive video of how to paint Seraphon models using Lock Croak very very shortly. Thank you guys for watching all the way to the end. So if you found this video useful, please give us a like and subscribe. Keeps our studio lights on and keeps us creating videos such as this one. If you want to support the channel even further, head on to our Patreon and if you can't Patreon, get a whole slew of painting content which I have been producing for the past year or so. Thank you to my Patreons for allowing me to do this and I hope to see you guys in the next painting tutorial soon. See you guys!